My personal opinion is that we have to keep geoengineering on the table. We have to look at it very carefully because we might get desperate enough to want to use it. The danger, of course, with geoengineering is the one I was referring to a moment ago. We don't understand the system well enough to predict its responses in detail, and that means there's always a danger if you try to engineer the system on a large scale that you will do something that has side effects that are worse than the dimension of the problem you're trying to cure with the geoengineering in the first place. Uh, there are a variety of schemes that have been discussed for geoengineering. A classic example is uh, injecting reflecting particles into Earth orbit that would uh, deflect some of the sunlight that would otherwise be warming the Earth and in that way try to produce a cooling effect to offset the heating effect of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. Uh, current estimates are that that would be very expensive that it would be problematic from the standpoint of injecting things into orbit that our other orbiting uh, space assets uh, would have trouble with. And it doesn't solve the whole problem because, for example, it does nothing about the absorption of some of the excess carbon dioxide in the surface layer of the ocean, which is acidifying the ocean and posing a potential threat to ocean creatures that form shells or skeletons out of calcium carbonate. Uh, it also doesn't even fully address the atmospheric heat transfer effects of the greenhouse gases because essentially you're interfering in the visible part of the energy spectrum in order to offset an interference in the infrared part of the energy spectrum and you can't expect that to be completely effective.